The meeting will come to order. We are now holding a special call meeting held Friday, July 24th at 9 a.m. Okay. And at this time, I would call on the so, Mr. Stan Bowling, the County Community Development Director, to give the invocation, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance to be given by Mr. Dylan Reingold, the County Attorney. Please rise. Let's pray. Lord God, we thank you for life. We thank you for another day. We put you on our agenda for about 60 seconds. And if that's all we do today in acknowledging you, we are fools. We, we admit that. We ask your help to remind us as we go about our business and pleasure today um, to walk with you, to hear you, to listen to you, to act. And we ask for that even during the decisions that are made in this meeting today, that this is a point in time when we admit things together and bring them before you. But we ask for your involvement in our response to you throughout the entire day, tonight, this coming weekend. And we ask this in your name. Amen. 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 Please remain standing and place the flag. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Stand up. Such a travesty to waste such a good prayer on such a small meeting. <laughs> but, uh, thank you very much. Next, we'll, we, are, we have one item we're going to deal with is public hearing today authorizing the adoption of the ordinance establishing an amnesty program for certain utility delinquency charges. Memorandum dated July 10th, 2015, found on pages 1 through 5 in the agenda. And so I guess we'll just turn this over to Dylan. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Good morning, everybody. Um, this board has twice approved delinquency charge amnesty periods to encourage property owners to pay off their unpaid service availability charges. The first one was instituted from February 14, 2012 to March 31, 2012. And the second one was then April 2, 2013 through August 31, 2013. On July 7th, the board had directed the county attorney's office to draft a third amnesty ordinance um, for a 90-day period beginning in September. Uh, since then, the chair, pursuant to his authority under the code, had called a special call meeting to address this issue today, and I made the logical um, a decision to change the date that was originally decided, which was September, to have it run to today. Uh, it will run from as proposed in the ordinance from July 24th to October 1st, uh, October 31st, 2015. Um, and with that, I merely recommend that you open up the public hearing today, take any public comment and input, close the public hearing, and then vote to adopt the ordinance. And with that, I turn it back over to the chair. Commissioners, any questions? Um, just. One, Mr. Chairman, if I may. Mm -hmm. um, I think either Jason or Vinny had sent out a um, spreadsheet on the previous amnesty uh, requests that we were processed. And I've got about, I think about 17 of them came in and paid. And of those 17, um, all but three are current. And the three that are not are only one month in arrears. Is that correct? Either Cindy or Jason. Uh, good morning, Commissioner Cindy Carenti, Utility Finance Manager. Um, that's correct, but reason being on most of those that are current, the properties have since been sold and in many cases developed. So uh, most of those, with those few exceptions, are not even reserve accounts anymore. Okay. And then there are some, um, one developer in particular that I recall off the top of my head that took advantage of that, that still has reserves and has remained current since that time. Okay. So just... As an overall policy, would you say the reserve, the amnesty, has helped bring some of those developers in and brought the, the funds into the utility now that they're current, we're seeing the ongoing revenue? I think what happened um, really in both cases when we did amnesty was during that open time period, the property sold. And that's why um, or how we got the funds or they got the funds to bring them current and then moved on and, and developed uh, the properties. And so I, so it did, I think it did help as far as selling the lands because it released if some I of could the encumbrance kind of on to those that, properties. Commissioners, and I'm, I'm sure you're aware, but for the benefit of the public, I'll go through this. So that the, the utility liens are super, or what they call super liens. They do not get cleansed through the foreclosure process. So much of the time what will happen, and it still exists out there today, that it, whenever a property goes through the, the judicial sale, 
the uh, any lien is still there with the uh, interest that accumulates and continues to do so. This is going to be a problem until we get through it. Um, people, obviously, they're not vesting early on any impact fees. I, at this point. I don't see it as a problem. I think it protects the public interest of utilities. I just want that clear. Okay. So Joe, Joe sees this as a good thing to, to just continuously have these liens on this property and never be, have them be able to be taken care of. And so it, whenever you uh, are not waiving the base capacity charges, the ready-to-use fee, fees, they're, they're already there. This is basically um, from what we've done here in the past on some of these others. As you can see, we got nearly a half a million dollars into the utilities accounts that was paid, uh, and about a quarter million was given up. So it's about, you know, spending... Spending a dollar to make two, it makes, uh, makes some sense, I think. Uh, of course, you know, this is out, what I'm going to say is out in the real world where these things are affecting title to the properties, and, um, and um, I just I see it on a, on a daily basis. Commissioner Solari. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, one issue I did have with this was the, the type of notice we had. Yes. I think the ordinary citizen, I mean, I had a hard time figuring out why we were having a meeting based on what we did at the last meeting. Mm -hmm. And I think both the public hearing notice and the staff memorandum could have been a little clearer in exactly why we're meeting today, which seems to be based on what I could tell is to change the initial starting date of when the amnesty takes place. I mean, I don't see how anybody in the public could have figured out that's what we were coming here for. So I would certainly ask if this, anything like this ever comes up again. For instance, at the board meeting when we okayed the amnesty and asked to go forward with it, we set a date of the first business day after Labor Day. Mm -hmm. So I think in the, in the memo, it should have been clear that that's what we did and this is what the proposed change is mm -hmm. so that people don't have to go fishing for it. Sure. And I think that's consistent with us being open and transparent and would like to see us go forward with that way in the future. And, and had this not been... Um just the third time the same ordinance has been adopted, I, I would I would probably agree with that a whole lot more. Oh no, I, I, I that's why I couldn't figure out what the heck it was. Yeah, because it, it was the same thing as before. And my point is, I don't see how the public could figure that out. You know, if we're if we're giving notice for a special call meeting, we should make it as easy as possible for the public to figure out why we're coming. Okay, that's my that's my. Yeah, look, that. through, through the chair to commissioner, sorry, I. I put the July date in the memo, but I admit I didn't go through the full analysis in the memo of how the date changed from September to July, and I certainly yeah, I, apologize. I, mean, just a matter, I understand. It's legally sufficient and everything else. I'm just going forward. I, I want to try to make this. Government's complicated. Yep. And I, this board has always and at all times tried to be as clear as possible so that it was as, you know, too many government agencies are too opaque. We can use the FDFC as, a, as an example of that and, and if all sorts of other initial agencies. So I want us to be more or less a clear guiding light for, for others and, and not joining the, the pact that they're in. Thank you. Any other questions or comments, Commissioners? Nope. Okay. Anybody from the public wish to speak? We'll go ahead and let's go ahead and this will be the public hearing. We'll open the public hearing. Good morning, Chuck Meckling. I just wanted to urge commissioners to pass this. I have been working with some groups of people and have had inquiries about land tracts. And I think the fact that the big picture to this is if these can move forward and that there is some consideration, as there has been in the past, it allows these tracts to possibly be developed. And the end result would be that, it, once again, it would be tax dollars in the coffers, people going to work, it would be a process that helps the whole economic stimulus here in the county, and that's the process that I hope to see take place with this. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Is, is nobody else left? <laughs> I think I'm dragging this out <laughs> longer. Again. All right. Well, in that case, we'll close the public hearing. Let the uh, record show that ample opportunity to address this issue has been provided to all. Uh, Jason, I got a quick question, if I could. How many are sent the? How how many? Uh, more, I, I guess I'd call them accounts because I've been mul multiple. How many more of these do we have out there? We have 280 reserve customers. Of those 280 customers that own reserve accounts, some as many as 1,001 reserve accounts, only 30 of those customers aren't paying the bills. Everybody else is uh, keeping current. So there's 280 others and uh, 30 are in a similar, uh, well, 30 are in a situation where they have not kept up on their service availability charges. Go ahead. Cynthia, do you have a uh, dollar amount on uh, what has uh, 
I don't have the full 30 listed. Um, or a general aggregate number. But uh, out of the, the larger group, I have, uh, let's see, I'll tell you how many customers this involves in a second. One, two, three. I have uh, 14 customers that have, you know, significant amounts of reserves. The total charges uh, being carried on those accounts is uh, just over 2.9 million, of which 1.7 million is uh, service availability and regular charges, and the remaining 1.2 is penalties. Um, there are some of those properties that, you know, we're in communication with some of these owners. Um, out of those, there's 2.2 million worth of those 2.9 million. I don't believe these folks will have any interest in participating in this program because the original plans for developing those lands no longer exist. They've one of them has several hundred um, reserve accounts, and their newest plans are to reduce and change the whole layout of that plat of land to use like 12. So they would have no interest in. Um, you know, bringing that account current for the hundreds that they own because they don't ever intend to use them. Of, of the 2.9 million, there's one that's 1.1 million. We're in litigation with them. Okay. And uh, that doesn't include the penalties. Mm -hmm. There are also their penalties are about 680,000. So of the, that group, there's one and major one. And uh, yeah, there's we're in litigation. Three, uh, there's about three or four that are really big, I think. And, and I guess really, I mean, I'm, I'm good with the ordinance as it sits, but I really do feel like this is a, if, if the board is inclined to do this, as they have in the past, to go through this exercise every time, I, I don't know that, I mean, this, this isn't going to be a permanent thing. Eventually, these properties somehow will be worked through the system. Um, but I don't know whether it's something that the board should vote on every time or how we would, would make this so that we don't have to have a, a meeting a, a, or have this as a part of it to advertise the ordinance. Um, and uh, especially with this being the third time of, of this being passed. Well, I, it has to be this way. I can't wait penalties. And, Can and, the board, and, though? And, I mean, we're, we're doing it. That's what I'm trying to figure out. I'm trying to figure out, okay, how could we do this in the event? Let, let's reward. Let's have everyone carry all the people that don't want to pay and their business expenses. I, I, I think this is so wrong. I mean, I'm, I'm for this amnesty. But I don't think that if we start saying, okay, if you don't pay your bills, we're going to reward you and have everyone carry you, I think that becomes a problem. Joe, the difference is, is that the system that we have has the ability to cleanse things off a of title even if people do not pay their real estate taxes. They can go through the tax deed process or it is cheats back to the county or something like that to get it back on the tax rolls. This is a lien on a piece of property that will, in, in theory, will never, ever go away. And therefore, it will forever sit there. There's got to be a mechanism at which we don't give away the farm at the same time, pull this property back but into being productive. If they go into bankruptcy court, the judge can take care of that. That's right. But if, if it's been taken over by a bank or something like that, the bank can't file bankruptcy. It's a real estate-owned asset, Joe. So I mean, it's not go everything ahead. goes directly into bankruptcy. If, if, I, if I could, Mr. Chairman, uh, we, we understand the, the rationale for, for this amnesty, but an ongoing amnesty we staff has some concerns about. So um, we have six, six accounts that have 500 or more uh, ERUs, and they are all current. Uh, from them, we get $553,000 in payments a year. If we make this an ongoing open book amnesty, uh, their incentive to continue paying is zero. I, I would stop from a cash flow basis. I think we'd, I think we'd be looking at losing a substantial amount of, of payments from accounts that are current. So that's the laws of unintended consequences. Yeah. If we're trying to help someone out, I think it's good to to do like the like we're doing today here. But if it becomes an open policy, I, I think a lot of our current accounts will find them not current anymore. They'll just wait until it's time to do something and then maybe become current four years from now or something like that. Um, but it could be a substantial uh, cash flow burden to the utility. Okay. Let's let Commissioner Flesher first. Then. Mr. Chairman, you, you're suggesting the, the thought of removing any threat of lien or... Oh. No. No, no, not that. Uh, and um, I, I guess this is the, just the third time. There's other ones out there, and I'm just trying to find a more efficient way of, of, of taking these, uh, the, these some of these properties that have this cloud on the title that needs to be remedied 
and, and trying to do it in a different fashion other than doing this every time. If we got to do this every time, if, we, if that's fine. I mean, I'm just, you know. I mean, it, this is what banks do. I yeah. mean, it, and they're, but therefore, if there's no no threat or concern for payment, there will be no payment. Mm -hmm. And uh, th that's the only concern I have. I kind of agree with the thought process of making it easier, removing government from this, but are we removing government from it by giving an autonomous amnesty? I, I have no problem with c going through this process every time. I was just try necessarily, I was just trying to make it a little bit more efficient so we didn't have to do this every time. So it's, I'm, I, I'm easy. I just, I, this I is the third the point, time. But I'm just concerned that now there will be no incentive for due diligence to pay the price of what has had occurred in the past. Commissioner, sorry. Mr. Chairman, I see your point, but I, I believe what Jason's suggesting is the system needs some discipline, and I'm good with that. But more importantly, I think that we're here as a result of the Great Recession. Surely. And I don't think it's going to repeat itself. So we're at the end of the problem now. So I don't think we should undermine an ongoing system in order to take care of a problem which is basically taken care of at this point. We may have to come back one more time, but I don't mind having a public hearing because, again, this is such a sort of dicey area that I believe it ought to be as open and transparent as possible. And if anybody from the public does have an issue, let them come. Sure. I mean, right now it doesn't seem to be, but you know, if you make it a part of the ordinary course of business, it, you don't know where, exactly where it's going to go. So again, given that, I, as I see it, this was a result of the Great Recession, we're about done with the problem, uh, I, I see no reason to change it this time. You know, it, 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 Mr. Chairman, and maybe, maybe not for t today's discussion, but I'll say it that uh, you know, this is a, a great shot in the arm for economic development, as was was pointed out. It will move things forward quicker, faster, and I didn't mention the word cheaper, um, but I will now. Um, if, for argument, an applicant has a, a situation that they could move a project forward, and quite frankly, do, do, do have all of their assets tied up, perhaps maybe we can discuss having a longer period of forgiveness or resolution or dissolution of the lien and give them the opportunity to pay it in a perhaps a year's time or a two years time and break down the payments so that they're not uh, subject to a uh, uh, such a significant uh, impact to move forward. I don't know if Council has any uh, thoughts on that. Well, let's, um, Dylan, you have any thoughts? I mean, I don't want to muddy the waters with this anymore. Yeah, I, I, I don't, but I just, you know, maybe perhaps for another day, but uh, I, I think there's room for discussion that uh, some of these numbers are significant and it might impede someone moving forward with a project that might be moved forward in the spirit of economic development. Okay. Yeah, Mr. Chairman. Um, Council. I mean, it's a policy discussion. If that's if the, if you uh, if this board would like us to analyze the issue again, I know what today we have is the ordinance in front of us. Um, if there are other issues you would like us to research, both the consequences of those decisions and the benefits of those decisions, we certainly can do so for the board. I'm just, well, Mr. Chairman, I, I would look look forward to that. I don't know if we have a consensus on that, or if you yeah, like I don't to, mind looking into it. Um, I, I'd like to look at the possibility of a a payment structure or a, a uh, in in the forgiveness structure as well. I just uh, mm -hmm. no, no, I was just wondering how much revenue now. Uh, We're still going to have a lien. Yeah. We're still going to have a lien. Don't forget that they can have a payment structure, but it's the public's money, and and if you don't want to file a lien, that that's fine with me, but. Then we're lost, I think, public purpose. But the they're still going to have a lien, so it doesn't go away. Yeah. So the, the if they're a big developer and and they got a payment plan, we're still. I think you, unless you just don't want to have a lien, and if we lose the money, we lose half a million dollars of the utility money that the other utility payers have to make up. But there's still going to be a lien, so I don't think it solves the problem. Of us being in, and if you, if you don't want to be in first place and you want to give that up, I, good. I, I just can't see that as a good public purpose. 
Well, um, I just have a real problem with that. I can't tell you how strong I feel about that. Joe, if it doesn't get foreclosed off, what difference would it make where, whether it's senior or junior? I mean, it doesn't go away. A lot. A lot. Because if you're junior, it doesn't. It does go away. No, it doesn't. These utility liens do not. Do not go well, away. That's what I'm saying about it. That's, what, that's my whole purpose for bringing this whole thing up. Okay. Oh, you just weaken your position, and that's, that's no, fine. No, it doesn't. That. Well, I mean, I guess the question that I have is, is certainly anyone can come forward and... and start paying more than they owe, you know, to try to pay off the balance. I was trying to, back to Commissioner Fletcher, where you, and then it's back to the issue that that uh, Joe Baird had raised, which is when you say set up payment plans, is that in the context of removing the lien, removing the outstanding payments and the outstanding principal, not principal, you, delinquencies and the like, and then, and then coming up with the structure for the rest. I'm just trying to understand what, what you're contemplating, and certainly I, I'm just looking for some guidance from the I, board. I, I'd, I'd like to see if we can uh, determine a mechanism that can allow uh, uh, an applicant to move forward to get the local labor force moving and to get the project moving that would give them a uh, an ability to deal with the bank and a deal, ability to also not remove their obligation to pay their debt to our citizens for what they want to accomplish, but give them a timed mechanism to do so. I, and I'm not sure how effective that would be. Um, I've had conversations with individuals about that sort of concept, um, and the issues I raised is, do you want us to subordinate our lien? What, you know, how do it work? And uh, it, the, the concept didn't seem very feasible in the context of a closing uh, that was being considered. That, that's kind of where I'm running into the, the, the barrier on that one. Joe, I was trying something? to run with that concept. I think it's extremely detrimental to our utilities. I'll be right up front. And, and just to, I don't want anybody to be misled about this process. I want to go back over it one more yes. time because the county administrator seems to, to think that if you have a mortgage on a home and then you sign up for a utility account and you get delinquent on your bill and then you get foreclosed out of your property, that the, for some reason that utility bill goes away. That's what he just said a minute ago. It doesn't work that way at all. And that's why we're here today. Is this because this because of this superior status of these liens? And that's it. Agreed. Can I comment? Yes. Uh, as, as far as the um, the home situation, there is already some language in code where we can work with customers who either, uh, in many cases, it's folks who buy these foreclosed right. homes uh, who have those significant liens on them. Yes. But keep in mind, there is a section in code that already reads that. Um, if there's a hardship caused by those penalties and interests so that it prevents someone from reconnecting. And that's the difference. The counts we're talking about today with amnesty are not connected to the system. The mortgaged homes are connected to the exactly. system. And there's already that clause where we can work with those folks if it does create a hardship and it's preventing them from getting the water connected where the director already has some authority to be able to waive some of those fees. And, I've, so, yeah. I, you and know, that's a very good point. And that's what makes this so different. Is there is no leeway other than what we're doing right here. And, and we've dealt with that. And, Cindy, th thank you uh, for and the entire staff for uh, looking at the issues in which we get confronted with. That's great for the individual homeowner or uh, property owner. But uh, I was looking at a larger scale for uh, those who want to get acreage onto the tax rolls and keep them there and, and have – quality homes for people and to to have Indian River County be moving forward. I, I do believe that, that that mechanism works for the individual cases, but I was just looking for a broader scale. Yeah. Mr. Chairman? Yes. Um, just looking back at the history of our amnesty program, February 14, 2012, we, we did the first amnesty program. Relatively short, it was about a six-week window. Um, and we had five accounts that were paid in full. Subsequ and I think we did the six-week window to try to create some urgency to, to get movement, um, kind of almost as a one-time option. You know, here's your one chance to get caught up. It's a it's a urgency. You need to come in in this six-week window and do it. And I, I think that's what we all approved and were thinking back in 2012. We were then approached by a lot of people that said, hey, you know what? Um, we would like to take advantage of this, but the time window is so short, we didn't have enough notice. Could you do another one and, and give us, and I think we did a better job of notifying the accounts. We sent out letters. We, we had more advanced time. 
and we opened a um, roughly it was uh, about a four and a half month window, and we got 12 more accounts come in. So I think part of my thought process is we, we created urgency. We created a, a window of opportunity, and, and and I agree fully with what Jason says. If, if if every time somebody comes in and says, hey, I'm thinking about buying down five lots, would you waive this fee? I don't think we want to do that. We've got 250 customers with reserve accounts that are keeping their accounts current. Mm -hmm. If we establish a policy that every single time somebody comes in, and, and I, I fully appreciate where you're trying to get to, to 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 move these things forward, but I have a great fear that, you know, if, like Jason said, if I'm one of those 250 paying, and I see every time, hey, somebody comes before the board and they give them amnesty, I'm going to quit paying. Yeah. I mean, why would you pay if you think you can just come in and get amnesty any single time? Um, so so I'm, I'm supportive of the ordinance, what we have here, you know, giving it one more shot. But I think going forward, I, I'm not going to be supportive of a full amnesty, you know, maybe a 50% waiver of the charges or something. But at some point, we got to say, okay, we, we have these charges, they're there for a reason, and we don't want to make it so where people quit paying just because we're going to waive the penalties down the road. The other thing maybe we could look at is maybe some type of cap, um, you know, a percentage of the original charge not to exceed, or I, I don't know, you know, maybe that would make it a little more palatable but still have a lien and, and charges accruing to a point. Um, but, uh, again, I, I think... We want to create a sense of urgency. We want to create a sense of this is your one-time shot to do this. Um, and and I, I am very concerned that if we keep doing this, that other customers are going to quit paying. So, um, like I said, I'll, I'll support this ordinance, but going forward, I'm going to have a difficult time just giving free amnesty anytime anybody comes in and says, hey, I want to get something done. Just... I think we have to stick to it, and I, and I just wish we were further along in, in the in the process as far as the recovery, because I think Commissioner Solari is probably more right than than I want to give him credit for that we are kind of at the end of it. Um, there's other ones out there, obviously, um, but we're getting there. And and if if um, you know if if all these properties work, fixing to come back on. Uh, and, and and back into the development stage, 90 days would be enough. It's just, I, and I, who would have, if you'd have told me in 2012 that uh, we're still going to be dealing with this same thing, you know, halfway through 2015, I don't know anybody would have believed you um, as far as what we're going through. But I, I I see what you're saying. I just don't have an answer for it until eventually all these properties get worked through. Commissioners, I think I can give you a little insight on um, some of Commissioner O'Brien's points, if you like, from a staff perspective. Um, some of those customers, really most of the customers that took advantage of amnesty, especially the second one, they were customers that staff had already been working with that were getting somewhat behind and were struggling to keep up. But it wasn't as if they were just ignoring their uh, obligation to the utility. Mm -hmm. They were making an effort, and then that longer window helped them come up with some other ways to you know, finance getting the caught up and back where they needed to be on track. So that... I, I do know from working with those customers, staff, um, my staff in particular and myself, work quite closely with many of these account holders because they are our significant revenue uh, accounts. And um, that was the communication that staff had at the time with some of those customers that couldn't make that six-week window. Some of these customers are working with um, conglomerate development companies where the Indian River County branch is just one little dot on their Man. big picture. So for them to get a significant check cut in six weeks was difficult, where when we gave them the bigger window, they had time to work with their corporations and uh, get those funds up. But again, um, I think it's important, too, from a staff perspective that those weren't, most of those weren't, I'd have to look specifically, but I know f many of them were folks we were working with that were struggling. Like I said, it wasn't as if they hadn't paid any of those base or were years behind. Some of them were months behind and had accumulated some late fees. And then that, that was very helpful for those customers. And, and one of those customers in particular is the one that is now has been staying current and is current today and is actually working on their development. Yes, Commissioner. Mr. Chairman? 
Uh, with that, I, I'd, I'd like to move for the adoption of the resolution as it stands. Okay. Got a motion from Commissioner Flesher, and I'll second that. Is there any further discussion? Anything anybody else would like to add? So Just, no, yes. The, the ordinance does state the, wa the waiver is applied. Such delinquency charges shall be waived if the unpaid service availability charges are paid in full. Mm -hmm. That's, That's within that window. Yes. Okay. Yeah. By October 31st, yes. Okay. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, nay. Was there a second? I did. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The motion passes unanimously. If there's no further business to be transacted at this time, I now declare this meeting adjourned.